This is the new Audi Q4 e-tron, and it's a vehicle that is perfect for the current times. You see, it's an SUV, which are really popular. It's a full electric vehicle, which is where everything's going. Plus, look at the grill. It's clearly prepared for a pandemic because it's already wearing its mask like that, isn't it? Look, there's my impression of the new Audi Q4 e-tron. Hello. Oh, it should be. Think it's. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this car. I'm going to tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what it's like to drive, and I'm going to check out its performance. And of course, being an electric car, its efficiency and the real world range you'll get from it. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the price. Actually, no, let's start off by talking about why I'm filming in the rain, yet I'm just wearing t-shirt and shorts. I just didn't read the weather forecast. Got it wrong. I think Audi has also got it wrong with the pricing of this car. You see, it starts from just over £40,000, and it does seem worth it. It's just that then you don't get the £2,500 government grant for electric cars because it's just a bit too expensive. Hmm. Now, you can go to Carway and you can save an average of £230 off a new Q4 e-tron through us. Doesn't sound like much, but that's because the car's new, the discounts might increase. However, Carway isn't just about getting a discount, it's about comparing different models and the actual price you're gonna pay for them. Now, if you wanna do that, you can click on the pop-out banner up there to go to Carway. But we're offering a new service now, which is even more impressive. I like this feature, right? So through Carway, you can actually sell your own car. All you do is input the details, upload some photos, and you'll get five offers back on your car from our trusted car wow dealers. It could be the one that you buy your new car off or a completely different one. They'll give you the cash and take your car away. It's dead simple. If you want to find out more about that, you can click that link or the description, or just simply Google help me car wow, and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. And we'll also help you sell your car as well. We've got it all covered. Now let's talk about the design because Audis are all about the design really and this is a good looking car from the rear like the bigger e-tron you've got the full length light bar I'll show you a clip of it lit up now you've got a roof spoiler as well a nicely designed rear bumper and of course because it's electric there's none of audi's fake exhaust nonsense going on at all is there i like what they've done here as well so you've got the badging for the q4 there and the model designation which is the 40 which relates to the power and it says e-tron there but i like the way they've got e-tron embossed in this part of the rear bumper. That's pretty nice, that is. Now, you're gonna be able to get another version of this car called the Sportback, which has a more steeply raked rear end. Here's an image of that car now, but this is the one that's slightly more practical. Here at the side, the Q4 looks rather like a Q3, but it's actually about 10 centimeters longer because it's built on a completely different platform. It's the electric car platform. It's quite nice, there are lots of creases. You've got your SUV lifestyle roof bars, darling. And you've got this two-tone effect here of the wheel arches. Now, on lesser models, this is like a grey colour rather than this painted blacky colour. Doesn't look quite as stylish as ever. You know, they want you to move up the range. One reason to move up the range is wheel size. So the entry-level car, the Sport, gets 19-inch wheels, which are a little bit too small for this kind of car. These are the mid-level 20s, but you can get 21-inch wheels. There is one thing that is a little bit Nah, though. Look at this drum brake. Old-fashioned drum brake at the rear on this car. Now, Audi says that that's because when you have an electric car, you don't use your brakes so much and the rear brakes get used even less and so they get rusty and they look bad. I don't know if that's just PR bullshit, right? Because other electric cars have discs at the back and the drums just look a bit crappy, don't they? It's a bit of a shame. Other than that, though, good-looking car from the side. Even better looking, in my opinion, with the Sportback version, which I'm going to show you from the side now. Yeah, I keep on pointing out the sport back version. I think I prefer the look of it. I think the least successful part of this car is the front with this huge grille, which is completely unnecessary because being an electric car, it doesn't need a huge grille to cool the engine. It's blanked out. It's just a design feature, really. You can get it in different styles, like body coloured and blanked out. But in this Solver, it's a bit too much in your face. Also, I finally found a fake vent. Look, there's fake vents here. And there. See, they're still at it. This isn't fake though. This is actually a vent to feed air into a radiator, which does call the electrical system. In terms of the lights, I'm going to come onto these lights a little bit later on, but as standard, you get LEDs and you can move up to the top of the range. Then you get those matrix LEDs, which will blank out part of their beam so you don't dazzle oncoming drivers. Overall though, I do think this car is quite a bit better looking than the Volkswagen ID4, which it shares many of its parts with. That car just looks like a blob, whereas this has a bit more about it. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below what you think of the look of this car. 
The inside of this Q4 is pretty nice, but then Audi always does nice interior designs, doesn't it? I like the shape of the dashboard, the way it's all angular and there's different colored trims to help brighten things up. Though it is still quite dark, they're very gray and black, the trims. There is only one particular thing I don't like so much, and that's the shape of these air vents here. They're a little bit too big, but the rest of it is really cool. I particularly like this hexagonal steering wheel that you get on the high spec version which this car is so cameraman lewis what do you think it's ugly he thinks it's ugly he's, he's wrong you're wrong wrong i like this feature as well the car is off when i turn it on though you're going to get things light up on the steering wheel for the buttons yay look i like that what i don't like is that they're touch sensitive buttons in fact, they're touch sensitive and press. So you can either press or touch and swipe. Just give me one option. I don't need two ways of using the button. And yeah, they are just more fiddly than physical buttons on old fashioned Audi steering wheels. Can't fault the quality. It's generally pretty nice in it, as you'd expect from an Audi. Things are brittle down here, but it's all solid. And that's the only real cheap bit that's high up and in your eye line that you might touch when you're going for the handle. Oh, the handle does feel nice. I'll tell you what's also nice, the driving position. So I've actually got the car in its like lowest slung seat in position. So it feels a little bit sporty, but there's loads of headroom here. So if you want to, you can really get the full SUV feeling. I mean, look at this. Come with me. <laughs> like jacking it all the way up. <laughs> this is how my mum would drive it, like that. <laughs> and then you get a much better view forward, but yeah. I've got a good rhythm, mate. Practice. Ah, oh, there we go. Well done. Now, this bit is quite interesting where you've got your driver's controls there. So, that's your gear selector, which is a little bit different. I prefer it than the big gear selectors, which seems pointless on automatic cars. But then we've got some other touch sensitive buttons. It's the one for the stereo volume control there. Obviously, you have it on the steering wheel as well, but you know, I don't like that so much. You've got some storage down here, your connectivity there, USB C inputs, and 12 volts still. And this car has wireless charging as well. You've got your cup holders there, and I've got my Audi branded bottle bits in there, and you've got decent sized door bins. Right there, I'm just. <laughs> The quality of the car is better than the quality of their drinks bottles. Look, that's got a leak. There's a little bit of storage in there. It's not great. And the glove box. They're doing that thing that Peugeot does. That where there's clearly the fuse box behind there. And they haven't transferred it across with the switch to right-hand drive. And you end up with a slightly smaller glove box, which is fine for smaller bottles, but you'd never be able to fit a big bottle in there. That is a little bit annoying. Can't fault the seats, though. These are very comfy. And high spec cars get this S embossed in them, S line and above. How's it? Sporty seats look good. Infotainment system, once again, it's the traditional Audi system. It's nice, it's easy to use. You can get an even larger version than this, though it's not available to order just now, which is apparently even better. And you've got the digital driver's display, which is clear, easy to swipe through. Really nice views on that as well. All dead easy to use. What I'd do though is just plug in my phone because this thing comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard and I just prefer Google Maps than in-house sat-navs. The only problem is though that you can't project your Google Maps onto this digital driver's display. It'll only show here if you're using it from your smartphone. I wish it'd just integrate that. It's not that hard, surely. Can't complain about this though. At least Audi doesn't make you operate the climate control system through the touchscreen. They have some separate buttons here so you can just be driving along and change the temperature of fan speed quite easily without having to take your eyes off the road for too long, which is a good thing. Here in the back, the Q4 e-tron is very spacious. It does feel roomier than a Q3. Look, loads of knee room. Headroom's good as well. Just so you know, that seat's in my usual driving position. I'm 179 centimetres tall, so most adults will be fine. Even people over six foot will be okay back here. Now, the batteries for this car are underneath the floor, and often with electric cars, that means that there's not much of a distance between the seat base and the floor, but it's actually all right here. You don't feel like you're in a stressed position. You can sort of stretch your feet out under the seat in front, but it is quite low, this seat though I have got it slammed. If the person in front has it raised up, you'll be able to do that even better. The floor itself is completely flat and you've got quite a wide middle seat. So it's going to be all right for carrying three people in the back at once if you need to. And if you need to carry child seats, look at this, the Isofix covers, quite clever, they just slide up out of the way. So you don't have the removable ones which you can lose. And there's quite a bit of a distance between this seat 
and the seat in front, so you won't have to move the front passenger seat forward to fit in one of those big rear-facing child seats. Now, if you haven't got someone sat here, you can, of course, fold this down, and yeah, that's an annoying thing with the old armrest having these cup holders that aren't covered, because you can't then rest your arm on it, which is the whole point. If there is no one sitting there, you can also fold this down for through loading if you need to co people and longer items if you're going skiing. I'm not sure you're going to be driving your EV all the way to the Alps. Maybe you will. In terms of other areas of practicality, there's nets here, there's door bins here, which are quite large, and then these extra door bins here. Brilliant idea, that is awesome. You've got those in the front as well. Now let's check this out while we're here. Will the rear window go all the way down? Come on. Yes, it will. I like that feature. Wait a minute, don't like that so much. This is scratchy plastics here, whereas in the front it's soft touch. Hmm. On the bigger e-tron, which is more expensive, soft touch all the way in the back. Other than that though, the quality back here is nice. And look, you've got some connectivity down here, two USBs, 12 volt, and this particular model has the tri-zone climate control, so you can actually alter the temperature here in the back separately to the front. Overall though, it's pretty good. Now you might think, oh, it's a bit dark and dingy though, isn't it? Because of all this like black plastic and stuff. It's not too bad because you've got big rear windows, but if you want a lighter interior, maybe, you'd prefer the VW ID4 because you can get light interiors with that. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, yeah, you know what to do. Click on the pop-out banner up there. Go watch it. Right, let's check out the boot. Oh, look, we've got an automated tailgate. Well, we should have really, shouldn't we? It's an Audi. Now, the big capacity, it's big, nice square shape. You've got a volume of 520 litres. It's enough. If you need a bit more though, Check out the Skoda Enyaq because its big capacity is 585 litres. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there. If not, stay with me. There's not really a load lip to lift stuff over, so it's easy to slide things in and out. I want to show you this. You've got some more storage underneath and there's room for the parcel shelf and your electrics. That's good. There's also some other areas you can store stuff here. Got a 12 volt socket, places to hang stuff off, tie down points, and if you need to carry bigger items, you're just gonna be folding down the chairs like that. And because the seat belts are held in runners, they don't get snagged on the seats when you fold them down. All very good, all very well thought out. And look, it's easy to slide things to the front like that. Impressive. You're probably thinking though, Matt, it's an electric car, so obviously there's more storage underneath the bonnet. No, there's not. There is some space under there, but Audi hasn't packaged it very well. They could have done something with it. They could have given this car a front boot, but they haven't. And that brings us on to five annoying things about the Q4 e-tron. This is a high-tech modern car, right? And this particular version is quite well equipped and expensive. It costs over 50 grand, the car I've got here. So obviously it's got all the cameras and stuff like that for reversing and parking. Well, let's see, I'm gonna put it into reverse. No, just sensors. If you want, the parking cameras, you need to get them as part of a comfort and sound pack, which also includes the adaptive cruise control, which will steer to keep you in lane and keep you a safe distance from the car in front. Well, that should be standard. On a Tesla Model 3, you've got all-round cameras, you've got autopilot, a standard. Typical blooming Audi, innit? The brakes make a weird creaking sound, like old floorboards in a haunted house. You ever listen to this? doesn't sound very modern, does it? Depending on how you hold the steering wheel, you can sometimes accidentally press the phone button with this part of your hand, and then it will dial the first person in your telephone directory, which in my phone is a chap called Joe Achilles. So Joe, if you've had lots of missed calls from me, that's the reason why I'm not stalking you, honest. These shiny bits of trim may look cool, but when you're driving along, you get reflections just flickering away. And then sometimes you think it's a car just in your door mirror at the corner of your eye. So you're like looking across and there's nothing there. It distracts you. The positioning and size of these air vents is a little bit annoying because when it's a hot summer's day and you want to blast yourself directly with cold air from the ventilation system, you need to use these. And if you hold the steering wheel properly, your hands are in the way and you end up getting freezing cold hands. So you've got two options. One is hold the steering wheel like a complete nut and moron. Yeah, some people do this. If you're one of these, please hold the steering wheel properly. So you can do that, or you can just accept it and then get frostbite in your fingers, but you may then lose a couple, which could be annoying when you need to write things down and stuff. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the Callway 5 core features. 
you can get this car with an excellent augmented reality heads up display and it will project arrows and stuff on the road as you're driving along so you know exactly which direction to take and it'll even flash up warning signs on the lines in the road if you start to weave out your lane. Here's a clip of what it looks like. I hope you're witnessing the clip now and Audi's got the B-roll for it. If not, we're probably showing you some pictures of something completely irrelevant. If you remember earlier, I was telling you there was something cool about the headlights on this car. Well, this is what it is. You can actually change the design of the daytime running lights between these four different options. Just press the button and select which one you prefer. Good. The regenerative braking on this car is so strong, it can actually slow it at 0.6 of a G, which means that you don't actually ever really engage the friction brakes unless you need to really stop suddenly. In fact, the system can recuperate 145 kilowatts. Now the actual motor's power is 150 kilowatts. So if you think about it, it's about the same. So the car's braking force when you lift off the accelerator is the same as the acceleration force, just in reverse. As well as the usual leather covering for the seats, you can get a vegan friendly one which is actually made up of recycled bottles. In fact, there's 26 bottles used in each seat. We key for us something called Efficiency Assist. What that does is use the satellite navigation data to check out the route that you're going on and it uses roadside recognition to optimise the use of your battery. It will also plan in your stops for charging so that you can do it in the shortest time possible. Right, let's talk about motors, batteries and charging. So the range kicks off with a 35 model. That has a single motor driving the rear wheels. It puts out 170 horsepower. It comes with a 55 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now that'll give you a range of 208 miles. It only has AC charging up to seven kilowatts and it can charge on a DC charger at up to 100 kilowatts. Then there's this 40 model. It has 204 horsepower from its rear motor. It has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, which gives you a range of 316 miles. It gets 11 kilowatt AC charging and can charge on a directional current outlet at 125 kilowatts. Then there's the top of the range model, the 50. That has a motor at the back and at the front and combined you have 300 horsepower. It also has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack and that gives you a range of 298 miles. Like with the 40 model, it has 11 kilowatt AC charging and 125 kilowatt DC charging. So which version should you go for? Well, what I'm gonna do is go on the car way. I'm gonna configure what I think is the best version of the Q4 e-tron. There we go, We've got some offers back from dealers. And if you wanna see what that model is and the offers, I'll put a link up there. Click on that, you can go check out what I've configured. Right, let's see what this e-tron is like to drive. Now I'm driving through a country club and golf course and there's those raised areas to slow people down with cobbles and stuff. And the suspension does actually deal with it quite well. Bearing in mind that being the S-Line, it has lowered suspension over the entry-level sport, so it's a little bit more firm. And of course, riding on big wheels, but it still does a decent job at lower speeds. Visibility is pretty decent as well. There is quite a big blind spot, you might think, by this, but this extra little bit of glass there really helps. And the door mirrors a huge. Now I'm just negotiating all the other cars in this <laughs> big car park of this country club. And the steering is nice and light, but not too light. There's still some feel to it. I can put the car into sports mode, which will weight up the steering, but there's no point because, you know, who wants that? I mean, it's not a sports car, is it? It's a family SUV electric car. That doesn't mean that it will topple over when you encounter a corner. It actually handles pretty well. The batteries are low down the floor, so you've got a low center of gravity, which does mean that it doesn't lean too much in the bends. It's fine, it's sure-footed, fairly planted. And of course, you've got the response of that electric motor. I mean, it's no rocket ship. If you want that kind of thing, you need a Tesla. Teslas are just quicker. In fact, you can see my full in-depth video review of the Tesla Model 3 by clicking on the pop-out banner up there. But this still picks up pretty sweetly when you put your foot down. Sorry, there's things rattling around in the foot. Well, I've got loads of snacks and stuff in there. <laughs> oh dear. Let's check out the acceleration. Here we go. Right, that's the auto brake anti-crash sensey thingy because I got too close to the car that's filming me in front. Now that was a good test of the suspension there. So that was a really nasty broken up piece of road and it dealt with it pretty well. You can actually get the car with adaptive dampers and that's only on the very top specification version. I'd like to try it with that. I bet it's even more comfortable, but 
without it, it's fine. I tell you what, this car is quiet and relaxing. I love electric cars for driving around town. Really, really easy. And you can put it into B mode, which gives you a bit more regenerative braking. So you can drive one pedal a little bit more. Though, when you come to a standstill, you do need to actually apply the brake for it to stop fully. Anyway, here's a roundabout. Let's try it around here. It's pretty nippy. Obviously, that leads into my charge if I start driving like that too much. Let's try on a faster bit of road. So, here we are, about 40 miles an hour. Just gonna accelerate. Yeah, the pickup's all right. And as you're driving along at higher speeds, it's quiet. The soundproofing is really good on this car. Obviously, there's no engine whirring away, so you do pick up other sounds. And there is a little bit of tire noise, but actually, it's still very, very quiet. This will be relaxing to go longer distances. Well, it will be, unless, of course, you're running out of charge. But how far can you actually go? Well, I actually took this car on a route earlier. Uh, about an hour or so, different roads, and I was sort of careful with the throttle, and I averaged 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour of battery, and this car has a usable battery capacity of 77 kilowatt hours. When you do the mass, that means that you could get a real world range out of this thing of about 270 miles, which is pretty decent. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Audi Q4 e-tron? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon it's the best small electric SUV you can buy. Though that is because we can't get the Tesla Model Y yet in the UK. But until we do, you should go right ahead and buy this Audi. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, then give it a like. And if we get enough likes, I'll make cameraman Lewis do a little dance for you in the next video. I will. Also, let me know what you think about this huge grill in the comments below. Is it completely pointless? Is it? Also, if you want to watch more videos, you click on those windows there. And if you'd like us to sell your car through CarWow, just click on that box there. You might as well use it. It's completely free. <laughs>